हेलो हेलो ओके फ्रेंड्स लेट मी गिव यू एक्सप्लेन दिस मास्टर पेज ओके नाउ द मास्टर पेज इज मैपिंग मास्टर पेज ओके इट इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एल वन टेबल ओके द मास्टर टेबल और एल वन टेबल इट इज एक्चुअली मैपिंग द अवेलेबल विजुअल स्पेस वी हैव ओके फोर जी बी ऑफ अवेलेबल विजुअल स्पेस दिस विचुअल स्पेस अवेलेबल विचुअल स्पेस ऑफ फोर जी बी इज फिफ्टी इंटू वन एम बी ईच ओके ऑफ फोर जीरो नाइन नाइनटी सिक्स एंट्रीज ओके वेरी फ्रॉम फाइव जीरो टू फोर जीरो नाइन फाइव सो ईच ऑफ दोज वन एम बी स्पेसेस आर स्प्लिट इंटू मल्टीपल वन एम बी स्पेस एंड हाउ दिस विचुअल स्पेसेस the virtual memory areas are considered is and where it is located is represented in the table okay so every every and every uh, one and the space of the virtual space has an entry in the table okay so this number of entries are same 4095 okay and each of them occupies four bytes of space each entry is in the table so totally there will be 16 kilobyte of L1 table. So once we have a table which will make, which will take care of the complete 4 GB space that are available for the programmer, then we can play around with that. We can say that maybe I can keep, you know, you can have anywhere in this, but the physical memory can be limited. Limited. Okay. Our same physical, you know, virtual space could be mapped to different locations in the physical memory. Okay, um, based on which process is running. So, for an example, suppose the user is, you know, um, I told you when it is a bottom uh, spaces are always directly mapped, so it may not go to MMU. So it will be there will be a space in the physical memory. The bottom some locations may be reserved. to make sure that it is one to one mapping is there because they always the uh, table and row is are there in the bottom address right? this is a higher address so which will be not having a mmu accessible path except for that anything that is on generate the virtual uh, addresses coming they will map to one of the entries in this and then now that the entry will decide whether it is directly no Pointing to one and the space in the physical memory, or it maps maps to it points to a table, another table which is called L2 table, and which you know gives a minute lag granularity uh, in terms of access permission of that one and the space. See each entry here of you know takes care of one and the space in the physical memory. Okay, that one and the space could be directly mapped to one location in the physical memory, or it could be going towards you know with the LTU entry. In this case, what happens is it is split into. Suppose if you are saying that one KB pages, then one and the will be having how many entries? Thousand twenty four entries. So out of thousand twenty four entries, I may decide to have only half of it pointing to the real physical memory, and the rest of the entries may say that you should generate a fault. That means that much space is not available, or you can say that uh, all the entries are available, but they have different access permissions. So, effectively, as a summary, L1 master table has to be there in the system, and it needs to have the 4096 entries, and it should be physically there in the physical memory. Okay, so that you will know. even any of the addresses are generated whether it is a valid entry or not okay i will explain uh, that is suppose uh, another physical uh, another virtual address is not physically present we can make an entry here to say that generate a fault if this happens this address is generated so we have to make sure that all the available petty value to put into addresses are addressed and the sense 
uh, what needs to be done when that kind of address comes that should be handled. So, this LVM master table that is why it is built as uh, 4K entries ok, 4K entries of 4 by 6. So, it is 16 kilobyte size and each of them taking care of 1 MB of space ok. 1024 KB of page size means 1 MB of section. So, that 1 MB physically can be there in the memory or it could be uh, not the not there at all then you will have a fault entry or you may point to another table which may give a final granular details about that page you know 1 MB section. Now, let us not talk about L2 now our focus is on L1 and that is what I am addressing now. And just to a continuity sake, let me tell you how these values are mapping. Okay, now you understand why this 4K and why is this 16K uh, kilobyte of address size, and then you know that it is taking care of one and space. Now let me uh, tell you in the fine table, if suppose you know fine table means the size is uh, one KB size. Okay, it is taking care of one one KB size. Okay, so if a, a table ok, the L2 table always one L2 table for 1 MB of space the virtual memory space 1 MB space ok. If I say that each table entry takes care of 1 KB of space how many will be there 1000 will be there right. So, 0 to 1023 entries will be there each of them taking care of 1 KB of space 1 KB of space size. Okay. Now, 1 kb of size, I have, uh, it also says that, so 1 kb of size means about 1024 entries and I said that one entry takes 4 bytes of space, so it will be 4 kilobyte, kilobyte of page size. Okay, the total L2 page, sorry, this is the L2 table size, L2 table size is 4 kilobyte, okay. Now, what happens if the page size is 4? It will be 4 consecutive entries will be giving the same value, will be having the same value of access permission right before cache behavior also. If it is a 64 KB page size, 64 subsequent you know, consecutive entries will be assigned with the same entry. That means, it will all have the same behavior in terms of you know, one page has to have the same characteristic I told you same attribute. So, if it is a 64 KB uh, of page size, then we will have all the 64 entries of 1 KB kilobyte page sizes will have the same attribute. I will tell you how the attributes are entered in the uh, you know page table, but that is what how it is done. So, I hope this page, page table entries you will be you are able to understand. Now, what happens to the course table? Course table means the page sizes are bigger. It is either 4 KB size or 64 KB size. This is also a L2 page, but instead of 1 KB, now the size is changed to 4 KB of size. That means, each entry in the page table of L2, L2 table uh, corresponds to 4 KB of size, page size. In that case, 1 MB space will be how many 4 KB of the entries will be there in 1 MB? 2 KB space. Because 1 fourth of what you saw in this time table. That is why you see 2 26 entries in the L2 table. If the L2 is a course table pointing to a 4 KB page size. In that case, how many, what is the total size you will have? If it is 256 entries into 4 bytes each, it will correspond to 1 KB of size. So, that L2 page table size will be 1 KB. And similarly, it also supports the 64 KB pages. That means, what? 30, okay. 16 into 4 is 64, right? 16 so, 16 consecutive entries in the L2 course table will have identical entries to support the 64 KB pages ok. Similar to what I said about uh, supporting a 4 or 64 in the final page table. So, I hope you understand the entries different entries what they correspond to let us go forward ok. Now, there are two levels of page tables L1 and L2. There is a single L1 page table known as L1 master page and that can have two types of page table entries. One is it directly maps con connects to a 1 MB space in the physical memory. Any space, any part of the physical, you know, virtual memory, 1 MB space, okay, 
there will be for every one entry of virtual page there is a one entry in the L1 table that L1 table may have pointing to the another section with you know it is one MB of physical memory it is all this one MB is somewhere it may be located that you know where it is located will be there in the base a value but it will point to a physical memory of one MB or it can decide to point to another thing one MB of another one MB of space in a virtual space may be having a one entry which may point to L2 table that will uh, that is the next one it may point to the starting address of L2 table which will say has where that is located and how the behaviors are and what is the phase space of that particular section. So, the master L1 phase table divides the total available 4G space into 1 MB sections. So, available 4G virtual space is split into 1 MB sections. So, it will have 4096 space table entries and the is that many entries will be there. Now, one more thing is you have to remember that the page tables are always on the boundaries of the sizes. So, what I mean by that? Suppose, uh, okay, let me draw it. Suppose we have, uh, you know, L1 master table. Master table itself has to be on 16 kb boundary. That okay? I will explain in the next question because the size is 16 kb. As a similarly, L2 fine table size is 4 kb, so it has to be on 4 kb boundary. And L2 post table size is 1 kb, so it has to be on 1 kb bound. Okay, what I mean by boundary address, you all understand. So let us uh, go to this now. Now, location of L. Now, as I told you, it is the L1 table has to be in the physical memory somewhere. I can locate it anywhere in the physical memory. Okay, L1 table itself. Okay. But it may be it will be mapped to one on one, one to one. So there is no need of MMU to access it, but it can be anywhere in the physical memory. It may not be even the lower space, it can be in the higher memory space also. As long as it is mapped directly without MMU, you can access the table. Now, for a discussion sake, let us assume that it is on the lower part of the memory, okay. The not typically OS and the call tables are lying in the lower end, so the zero is here. Now, what is the size of L1 table? It is 16 kb, correct? Now, 16 kb occupies how many bits of addresses? You said you, you know that 1 kb takes 10 bits, correct? 10 bits of address. So, 4 kb will be under the 2 bits, 12 bits. 16 kb will be 14 bits of address space. So, the first, the lower 14 bits will be 0 because anything after that only the address is because it is under boundaries of 16 kb. So, starting from maybe 4000 hex, why 4000? The first 3 nibbles will be 12 bits and then rest of the these 2 bits also are 0. So, 14 bits are taken care of. So, starting from 4 any bit any value pattern you can give in the higher values to locate that 16 kb of L1 page table. Why do we need a register like this? Because this we can be accessed using the co processor and the hardware MMU, okay, MMU while accessing the L1 table, it can easily use this register and keep it here somewhere and then you can use that address along with the page uh, whatever address, you know, virtual space is coming based on the address, it can index into the table that is why right. we need to index into the table ok. So, for that we need to know where the table is starting at. So, the starting address could be physically anywhere. So, that is stored in the register it it, uh, it can't be anywhere else it has to be in a co the register. So, that it can be used by the MMU whenever it wants to access the L1 table ok. That is why you are seeing that uh, it is on 15 kb boundary. So, it is a lower coding register 0 ok. I hope this is clear to you. Now, let us see the location of element master space table in memory is set to set by writing into this register. So, we once we decide okay where we want to keep the L1 page table, that address can be written into this register. Then what happens automatically MMU when it is translating the address, it will 
get the base address of the L1 and then based on the virtual address that is coming from the back of that, it will index into this in table and to find out what is the mapping for that particular virtual address in the beginning. So, the CP between CP region holds the translation table based address. This is called translation table based address. Address. And address pointing to the location of the master element table with the memory, which is also the same as physical address. I told you that to access the page table, we cannot use the MMU, so it is the same as the physical address. L1 needs to be located on 16 KB boundary in memory, where L1 table space is also 16 KB. So, one sample instruction is like this. So, what is this MCR? We can have some value, okay, either R1, R2, or anywhere, okay. Uh, which is actually having a lower 14 bits having 0 and then the remaining bits are having a some valid address which are which is pointing at the physical location physical memory location where the element table is starting. And what are these registers? This is the T2 C0 register and then we are telling that whatever is the register is having the value take the lower okay bits and then use them to access the page table. Who will be accessing the page table? The NME. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we are we are setting up but entries page table entries are filled up by the OS. So it has to keep somewhere in the location you know uh, main memory and then it has to say where it has kept the page one page L1 table in the physical memory by writing into this register. Okay, that's all. Mm -hmm. Now once this register is pointing at the starting of the address of the page, then the remaining index can be accessed based on this location and then you may have to multiply by 4 because this, you know, each entry is going to be taking 4 bytes. So, the location, the particular entry is accessed. Uh, if, you know, I will show you each entry corresponds to what, but if suppose the entry has a lower middle, lower bit as 1 0, it means a section entry. That means, this one entry space, what is this 3? Three is the third one MB space in the virtual memory. First one MB, okay, where it is pointing at is given by this entry. Another one MB, this which you know, this is the virtual space. Another this is up to one MB. The uh, one no, this one MB, where is it located? Whether it is a pointing to the you no, know, this space is referred to a L2 table and then pointing here or directly a section entry will be where it is located also will be mentioned here. So, this entry is shown. So, that means the fourth one will be hmm? that is 0 to 1, 0 to 3 uh, starting from this four, this space 4 mb. Okay. This space is what is a section entry. So, this address will say this 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 uh, physical address which maps to 4 and 4 you know, 0, 3 to 4 mb space is mapped to which part of the physical address is given by this table. Okay. That is why you see that 20 bits are offset is there because within the 1 MB, 1 MB is what 20 bits will correspond to 1 MB space. So, it will index into this 1 MB. So, this is how it is mapped. I hope this is clear to you. Okay. Now, let us see what are the possible entries. See, it could be a section entry. That means what? It actually says where is that one MB is located in this space, and then it will have only one access permission because all the one MB section is treated as the only entry. So it will have access permission here, and the domain is the another level of control. Okay, I will explain shortly, and then what are the behaviors of cat and knocker, and then the lower one zero if it is one zero. If the entry has 10 as a lower 2 bit, then um, the MMU will consider it to be a pointing to a 1 MB section directly. It is not pointing to another MB page table entry. But if it is a 0, 01 or 11, 1, that it corresponds to a coarse page table or fine page table, which I told you that two L2 tables of size different sizes and uh, coarse table is actually 4 KB of page sizes. So, offset will be, so the 4 KB of uh, page size means how many uh, page size, what is the page size of the post table? It is 1 KB, correct? We saw that. 
if the phase size is increases, the phase size individual phase size is increased, then the uh, table size will come down. So it is 1 kb size. So it is uh, mapped onto some location which is the 1 kb boundary. So actually these entries give where the L2 table is Okay, it is a starting address of the L2 table. Please remember. Then within that, how those one in the space is access permissions are given, you have to go into access the L2 table. It is only giving the base address of L2 L2 page table. If the L2 page table is a fine table, then the lower bits will be having one one, and this is fine table means it is a four one KB pages. One KB pages means how many entries? Because there will be four kilo four K entries should be there because it is corresponding to one MB. Okay, one KB is corresponding to one MB. And uh, how many entries will be there? One K entries will be there, but it is actually four by six, so four kilobyte of the time. Okay, so that's why it has to be on a four KB boundary. So twelve bits will be not ignored here. This is the starting address of the L2 point page table. Starting address, okay, because it is on the twelve bit boundary. Because the size is four KB. So if the page size is small, the size will be more. If page size is bigger, the size of the page table will be small. So accordingly, the number of bits it occupies to give that starting address will be different. Now, why this is required? With all this zero, it indicates that that virtual space of one MB is not mapped to any valid space in the physical model. See, if if we can represent all four GB, okay, to a valid space in physical memory, then you know, don't need a MMU at all, right? You have all the physical memory of one four GB. That is not the Practical case. Anyway, all 4 GB is not going to be represented in the physical space. So, but virtual space will have all 4 GB. So, we have to have entries whichever is the hole where there are no memory available in the system. We have to make an entry like this. So that in case if ARM processor generates such an address, it will be caught. That means it will. If a fault happens, then MMU will generate a um, data about a piece of paper to catch that error. So I hope this is clear to you. So this is the one MB section, okay. And this is a 4 KB boundary. This is a coarse L2 page table. If page table page size is more, that uh, the table size will be that number of entries will be less. So the table size will automatically be less. That's why work only it is a 4 KB boundary because the size is 4 1 KB. And if it is a fine page table, it is a 4 KB of size. The page table itself. So it will be on 4 KB boundary. Okay. A fault entry generation about exception. That's what is here. But why there is nothing entry here, no entry here? It is actually not pointing to any section or it is not pointing to any table. So as soon as the MME looks at this, it is a don't cap. The MME doesn't even look at this entry in this place. Once it is 0, 0, then it will know that it is where. There is no valid entry, there is no this virtual space is not mapped to anything physical, so we have to generate a fault. So, MME generates a fault to the proper okay. Good. Now, there are two different controls to manage the task factor. Primary control is domain, so in this space, I said domain is there. Domain is four bits are allocated for that. I am explaining that four bits what they mean. So, primary control is the domain, and then secondary control is the access permission bit. So, domains control basic access to the virtual memory by isolating one area of memory from another and carrying a common virtual memory map. So, this whole as I told you this L1 page table has is mapping the whole 4 GB of virtual memory into some spaces in the entries in the L1 master table. Okay. So, it has actually each area of one MB is mapped to we can give a different domain and then control it differently. When domains are assigned to a section, it must provide the domain access rights. Domain access rights are assigned to another register. Okay, because domain access rights okay, I will tell you this register is having a 0 to 15, 16 domains are given. See in the page table entry, you have only to say that a 1 MB section, okay. What domain it belongs to? Okay, it may belong to domain D4 or it may belong to D11. 
you are only saying which domain it belongs to a particular one and section but what that particular section refers to what is its uh, access rights are is given in this bits okay so each of them are occupying two bits i will explain you what are the difference in this that could be there so you will know that how this domain can control a particular section of the memory so this controls the core subject to access the sections of the virtual memory now these are the entries okay if it is the one one access is uncontrolled that means the section can be accessed by either in privileged mode or in user mode but one zero is unpredictable okay it is not defined zero one means access controlled by permission values set in pt so if it was a um n1 page table okay is a section if the domain says it is 01 for me okay then if you remember there was a ap field also in the l1 master table entry ap access permission so as per the access permission the control will be done okay access permission to that one md of section will be controlled by the ap field in that particular pt ap okay so or it could be a l2 table l2 table also which will also have a domain which is mapped to this then it will go by the access permission given in the particular page table otherwise it is a uncontrolled access so it is required sometimes to have a uncontrolled access to all the section so we can use this particular uh, domain entries to achieve that okay uh, because once you change one domain suppose i have so many entries in the you know the page table and then i want to you know Uh, control all the accesses using the domain entry. I don't have to go to every PTE entry to change those accesses because I would have given the same domain. Suppose I have given a um, no domain access initially to say that please go by what the PTE says. Okay, that is one way. Another one is I could have done that uh, domain. Um, so if suppose if I have given a domain, you know, for all these uh, entries. domain as d30 okay so then what happens if the domain value says it is uh, 13th domain then the two bits here will you know there will be so many entries with the domain 13 in the page table all of them will fall under it will follow what the access permissions are mentioned here so if i come here and change initially i have given uncontrolled and then later on i make it to 01 what happens it will all be controlled by the ap then suddenly i want to decide that i know don't go by pt access access permission i want to have uncontrolled access to all the pages in the system i can i need to do only a change in this particular domain setting i will make it 11 i like it to use in this scope also i 11 then what will happen the page table entries are not considered at all okay they will remain there but they are not considered for access permission and we have uncontrolled access so os can have a control on multiple pages by just changing the domain entries here okay it needs a little bit of thinking to relate to it please remember first access to a particular page table is seen by the domain value and then based on the domain what it is set okay we could have represented one of the fifteen domains we could have given and then based on the domain entry a page table access permissions are considered so all the ent entries you know any l1 as well as l2 will have both domain as well as page table entry access permission will be there whether to consider this access permission in the page table entry or to have uncontrolled access is what the domain is deciding so i can change i can put some domain values in some set of pages and then if i come and change those values to either Zero uh, one to one one or one one to zero one. Then I can, you know, have access to all the pages with one minor change. Okay, um, this is what is the need of the domain. So one program can be a client of some domain and a manager of some other domain and have no access to the remaining domain. So program uh, particular virtual space it could behave as a different domain and that control also you can have. Okay, that is what about L one page table and domain. now let me see, tell you what l2 is as i explained to you this entries i have already explained so let me go through that when l1 table is acting as a directory okay so if you recall the lower two bits will say whether it is the l2 
course table or fine table or a fault entry or is a section entry. So, if it is one of these two entries then it is a it is a directly to L2 table. So, L1 PT contains a pointer to either an L2 course page table or L2 fine page table. it could be one of them not both it could be one of them. So, both tables represent one entry of virtual memory and one entry in L2 course PT points to 4 KD page sizes and L2 fine page table 1 KD page sizes. So, as I told you the entry where in course table points to 4 KD page sizes in fine page table it will be 1 KD of page sizes. So, when a higher page sizes are to be supported similar entries are stored in multiple pages as I told you earlier these higher sizes are represented by having a similar entry. So, if you want to have a 4 KB page ok of uh, uh, no right access uh, right back access and then buffering uh, we want to have then these access permissions can be entered in all the 4 page table entries and all of them will have the same uh, access permission. So, that is what we are saying where we can we can do that. So, an example 4 KB page size in fine entry table has 4 similar 1 KB entries and similarly 64 minutes it will have here 64 entries similar entry that is it ok. Let me a large page entry uh, defines the attributes of 64 KB page size ok there is a large you know we call this a large page that is 64 KB of page frame is for large a small page is a 4 KB page frame a 4 page KB you know frame is here ok and then a tiny page is called 1 KB page frame this is the fine entry in L2 table. The fault page entry generates a page fault about exception when access. ok. Now, let me explain this ok. Up to this point ok 1 MB of space ok this is 20 bit ok. So, 1 MB of space. So, whatever is below that offset using this register ok we access the table and then try to step that 1 MB of space whether it is pointing to a physical location ok or it is pointing to some directly it may be pointing to a physical location or it may point to a L2 page table. Based on this entry we know that it is a uh, L2 page table ok and of what size course size because 1 0 is the 0 1 is meant for course page table that means what course means 4 kb of size. So, 4 kb of size means once we get an entry from this this points to an you know index here and then we can get the base address of the table from here ok and then index we are getting it from the remaining address because this one MB space only is divided into 4 kb right. So, that this this portion corresponds to 4 kb. So, this will be an offset will make you access the particular entry in the table and then then we will know this 4 kb is mapped to this location by looking at this value which will be anywhere any value here. So, it can be anywhere in the physical memory you will get that particular address and then you add that offset value to access the particular page. So, effectively in the virtual space wherever this 4 kb is lying ok may be man made to look you know to be placed in anywhere else in the physical memory. And then it will not only say where this 4 kb is lying but also this table entry this entries we are not giving this I will show you this will be giving you access permissions to that entry ok. So, why do we need only for this co-passer and then we do not need a co-passer entry here because we are make, you know getting the table base address from this page table entry. So, each of those entries in the master table if it is pointing to another L2 table it will have the physical you know address where it is the particular table is located and then you know this is all physical address ok whatever you are getting is physical address but it is not using the MMU here it is directly mapped to physical addresses. So, you get the um, you get to access the L2 page from there you get the actual physical address from there and then add the offset to access the exact particular location in that particular page ok. I hope this is clear to you it is little complex, but you you have to look at this slide look at what is happening and then all the explanation that I have given you so that you will be able to internalize this particular page ok let me explain some more. So, each of the L2 page table entries can be of this if it is a large page 
okay um it will be 64 kb of page table size l2 page table size will be 64 kb because if it is a large a, a huge page means 64 kb of page size so that 64 kb of page size you need to keep 16 bits not needed only the higher values so we will use this physical address to access that particular page once the 64 kb page is accessed the access permissions are given here they are given four different access permissions to give that 64 kb you know um, okay so here how many bits are there 16 bits right this corresponds to 64 kb of page that 64 kb of page is split into four areas by giving this access permissions there so you will be able to control it at the even though it is 16 kb you will be able to control it at the you know, granularity of four in terms of access permission okay now what happens to the small pages the page size is small 4 kb page size so that's why you are saying that 4 kb out of the 4 kb also you have different access permissions for different so you can decide to have within the 4 kb page all the 4 kb will be have the same access permission or different access permission based on the value so ap0 corresponds to this location as a similarly ap1 so this whole thing can be belonging to one part okay but this can decide a core this uh, data this may have a stack then you can define the access permission uh, according to the whether where what you are placing in each of them and then where exactly they are located you can give it in this base address so complete you know access control is there for a particular page of size 4 kb and uh, even though the base size is 4 kb you have a finer access permission if you want to otherwise you can give the same access permission to all the entries so they all 4 page 4 kb page 4 kilobit of page will behave the same way tiny pages you do not have any any more final granularity other than more than 4 kb so all 4 kb of space is given a same access permission that is why you see that only one entry is there okay they are not gone to the extent of splitting into some some more 512 uh, bytes or something that which is meaningless so all 1 kb of size is given the same access permission and then the behavior cache behavior and buffer behavior so all these entries are again similar to L1 page table or known as based on the lower 2 bits okay and then the uh, the exact physical address is given here based on the page size the physical address length will be defined 4 kb page size you will have bottom 4 kb because the offset is coming from the uh, directly from the original address generated by the processor remaining location only you want to know where exactly located so that's the base address is given for a page and then rest of it is used for access permission or um, no, it is it, it, not part of the address okay it is only this part is actually is filled by the offset coming from the processor address. So, the remaining is page part. If it is 0, 0, if I am coming to 0, 0, there is no physical memory present for the address. So, PT holds the base address of page frame and then the entry also includes four sets of permission with fields and the cache and write buffer attributes for the page. So, each of them will be mapping to a from you know the lower address to the higher address. Okay. I hope this is clear to you. So let us uh, uh, see that the access permission bits are similar to what we saw in ECU. Uh, rewrite, privilege mode, and then user mode. Mm -hmm. Different combinations can be there. And then the cache behavior and data behavior is combination of these two bits. We say not cached or not preferred, not cached and preferred, and then cached and write through. If it is cached only, you have to say whether it is write through or write back. If it is not cached, we have to only say whether it is buffered or not buffered. That's all. Okay. So, this is how the control goes. So, NMU finally after initializing all the registers, we may have to enable those cache, you know, and then MMU, okay. And so, those bits are write buffer, those bits are set finally, and they are located in this particular co-processor address. And then we can have instruction cache enabled or disabled. And V is another uh, which I have not told earlier so far. Because I was saying the vector table can be only at this location, but for some system, we cannot keep uh, memory in this address and we want to keep some flash or something or some other memory uh, in this higher address, then we can locate the instruct vector table at a higher address. Okay. 
that is Charles uh, the digital system designer and they are only they have to take care of setting the bit v bit. So these are all supported only in these processes, not by the earlier versions of the processor. Okay. So this is how we have to finally do this to enable after pro programming the memory registers and tables are built and then they are initialized you have to. So how we can do this? Yes, the typical system is like this. So kernel region, fixed addresses. What do I mean by fixed addresses? This is mapped directly to the physical address. So there is one on one mapping. So NME is not needed to access any of them. So page tables can be accessed and any shared code or data can be accessed and then system code that is OS code is here. And then the rest of the task physical location is here, but their uh, task region is in this address. Okay, all of them are mapped to the same physical address, but they will have a different page table entries to point to different locations in this. And then we are not using this space. And then the peripherals are mapped to this. As I told you, the peripherals are mapped to memory addresses. So they are here. They are mapped to fixed addresses. So the whatever address we generate, it is mapped to the same location in there. Okay. There is no um, memory MMU required for accessing this because some of the physical uh, peripherals we do not need to use, we do not want to use MMU, we want to directly access them that also can be that. Okay. So, dynamic addresses this is a task region is always going to the page table so that we can enable particular tasks at a particular time in point in time. So, this is a typical example I want you to go through the uh, book where the actual implementation of this is given uh, in the ARM system developer's guide, this will make it more clear to you. Okay. What is the uh, order in which we do? Define the fixed area of the system and software regions. This fixed area is for keeping the system software and page table. This enables to access them without the help of MMU, is remember that is what I told you. Define the virtual memory maps. This is what you have to do to set up the MMU. Define virtual memory maps for each task in the system and then locate the region regions listed in step 1 and 2 okay, into the physical memory map. We have to decide where you want to map that into physical memory and then define and locate the page table within the page table. So, uh, you can see TB, those registers can be initialized based on where you want to place those page tables and then define the data sources needed or entries needed for the regions and page tables. These structures are implemented, implementation dependent however, a general form of these structures can be a good starting point. So, this is implementation dependent. Why I call it as implementation dependent? Because the physical memory, where it is in the memory, is uh, it will vary from system to system. So you may decide to have a page table somewhere, you may decide to have a task running from another location. So these physical addresses are different accordingly, the MMU or page table entries will be the same. So initialize the MMU and caches and write proper and then enable them. And then what you do? You have to have OS context switch routines gracefully transmitting from one task to the other. Okay, that's all. We have completed all the MMU related thing. I hope this was uh, clear to you. Let us go now. This is only one slide to um, tell you what is the tightly coupled memory. The PCM is designed to provide a low latency memory that can be used by the processor without unpredictability of cache. Why I say that cache will bring you unpredictability means because of the, the kind of control flow there, the particular the entry whether it is there in the cache or not is not in our control completely. It depends on the flow of the program. Okay. So, because of that what happens is if you do not want some routines to be affected by the cache behavior, we do not, we can say that you know that part of the memory may not be cached. Okay. And then you know we can keep it as a tightly coupled memory where the cache may not be coming into play. It will be directly accessed and any write happening to the memory will be directly going to the memory. It will not be going through the cache. So, that is the scenario. So, such a memory can be used to hold critical routines like interrupt routines and real time cost routines. Yeah, we do not want on, you know to access the interrupt handling some cache features happening and then memory access happening. We want directly to access the memory and it will be available. So, teaching is used where inter in indeterminacy of caches would be highly undesirable. In addition, it can be used to hold scratch card data, data that is propriety properties are not well suited to cache. Typical data structures such as interrupt card. Okay. They, they, they do not, we do not want them to be in the cached area. Up to four banks of data TCM and four banks of instruction TCM are supported by the architecture. Each bank must be programmed to be in different locations in the physical memory map. So, I am not going into detail because that will have another, you know, uh, lengthy discussion, but 
need to be if uh, not if we know that there exists a TCM and we can configure a core data TCM and insertion TCM using some registers and we may have to see the literature to know more about it. Okay. So with this we have come to the end of memory management. So we talked about you know we understand and we understood about you know and MCU, then virtual memory translation with set buffer and then I explained you about what are the elements phase tables and LP phase tables and how they can be located in the memory and how different access permissions can be configured in them. This is a very important part. I want you to you know look at this uh, lecture again to you know multiple times if you do not understand in the first go and read the book also uh, especially the book on developers guide uh, the book will be good to understand them and then look at the examples also to have a clarity ok. Um, and I am very happy this is the book I was referring to. I am very happy to share this information with you hope it was useful and uh, wishing you all the very best in your further uh, reading this particular topic ok take care see you in the next class bye bye.